Hi, Ramona. It's Sky here from Sumo Psycho. Thank you so much for having me on Gym Rock Crew. Hey Jim Rockers, welcome to this fitness interview with Gorgeous Sky, vocalist of Canadian rock metal crossover band Sumo Psycho. They've been a band for over 10 years and have toured with Ginger, Butcher Babies, Nonpoint and more. Sky released her first record when she was just 13 years old and was initially a pop singer. In the sun. Now I'm living on the run, looking out for number one. Did you support Britney Spears on tour? Yes! And Sumo Psycho was born in 2009. Sky also does her own music video production. And honestly, their videos are so cool. Let's get to her fitness secrets. So I myself was not a sports kid. I was more of a creative kid. I remember specifically maybe around second grade, I signed up for ball hockey, hockey being very important here in Canada. And I realized very quickly, I was the only girl who signed up and none of the guys picked me to be on their team. And it was kind of like a disheartening moment. I remember specifically after that, like not signing up for team sports. Unfortunately, I had that experience. Uh, it's not that I wasn't good at sports. I just didn't really try. I didn't really like the competitive aspect of it, but I did end up doing a lot of dance and competitive dance and musical theater. As I got deeper into that, it did become a lot more physically demanding. And my family definitely did encourage us to follow whatever passions, whatever activities we enjoyed. But I do remember the one thing my parents were adamant about was that we learned how to swim. So when I went into swimming lessons, I could not figure out the breaststroke. My dad had to give me like this really badass pep talk to be like, you learn the breaststroke, you can do this you go in there you do it <laughs> so they were very encouraging of me growing up that's for sure I remember a lot of family dinners around the table and my mother trying to cook things that we would all eat, but trying to give us nutrient balance. I know parents have a hard time and they all did their best. There's definitely nights with chicken fingers and pizza and all that good stuff. But I do remember learning pretty early, like what was, you know, vegetables were good and filling up on bread before your meal wasn't great or wanting to go straight to dessert wasn't great. So I kind of had a little bit of an understanding as a kid, but slowly as I grew up, I started learning more and more about nutrition. Say slow when I say yeah. I think society has definitely accepted and encouraged it, especially when I was growing up in the 90s, early 2000s, where it was just about being as thin as possible. I have had my moments. I remember gaining weight later in my teen years and being told by my management that I needed to lose weight. And I remember being devastated. And I remember just thinking, you know, as a kid, I'd never struggled too much with weight and having that kind of pressure especially when you know I'm in an industry that I knew my parents was really important to at least some people <laughs> it you know it was a really hard pill to swallow and I think to this day I catch myself in photo shoots and whatnot like just dismissing what would normally be like a beautiful photo just because I don't like one little aspect of my body and it's kind of sad because it takes a lot of unlearning to get over that kind of stuff I think nowadays hopefully there's more messaging out there that's more accepting and different types of bodies that people are seeing in the media so that the next generation growing up can love themselves the way they are, you know? You know what's funny? Alanis Morissette was told by her management to lose weight and she was put on a ridiculously strict diet and it really messed her up for years after. Hey, fuckers! Nice lie. Whoa. As I previously mentioned, I was in competitive dance and one of the classes that I took was called Stretch and Strength, which was one of the classes that really kind of helps increase flexibility and strength for some of the more like intricate dance moves. That's where I kind of learned, you know, how to do sit-ups and push-ups and how to do what cardio was. And that was pretty early on, I say in my preteens. And I remember kind of like when I learned what abs were and that was like the big thing that we all saw Britney and Christina and the music 
music videos when I was a teenager, you know, dancing around in their belly tops. And I remember being obsessed with doing sit-ups and I just would like every day try to do as many sit-ups as I possibly could. And to the point where it probably was not healthy at that age to do that. But it did, I guess, give me that awareness of wanting to be physical and wanting to work out and liking the idea of kind of having these goals and reaching them. And then when I was probably around 17 or 18, I got introduced to gym and strength training. I would just kind of soak up all the different techniques of walking inclines. And my cousins were like Olympic rowers and I would learn on the rowing machine, like the proper form to do that and learn what squats were, all that kind of stuff. So I got into that uh, through personal training when I was in my younger years as a pop singer. I kind of had the opportunity pretty young to work with a personal trainer. And it was kind of one of the craziest experiences of my life because I was at a gym. It was like a private gym. So there was only two trainers and two clients working at any given time. And some of the celebrities that were being trained the same time that I was, was like almost just made me want to go <laughs> to work out to just see like who else was gonna be there. Like they had Sylvester Stallone and Bruce Willis and Nicole Scherzinger was there and Ben Affleck, JLo. It was, I mean, every A-list celebrity was at this place that they had like a little paparazzi drawer that they would look out to see if the paparazzi were watching them. So it was a pretty insane experience. <laughs> I would like to say that I am completely healthy when it comes to the alcohol and things like that. But you know, I kind of have a party girl side to me a little bit and I do like to loosen up with a couple drinks before the show. I have gone months where I realize, okay, I need to kind of recalibrate and go without any alcohol, but I don't really have any rules about that kind of stuff. I don't smoke because of my voice. I would definitely not recommend that for vocalists. Although some people say it gives you this great rasp, but for me, I wouldn't jeopardize my voice with uh, smoking, but I do enjoy a drink or two, but it is very important to have it in moderation and to know when it's affecting your health. So if you can do without it, do without it. But sometimes, you know, the little liquid courage before show doesn't, <laughs> doesn't hurt me. <laughs> I do, like I mentioned, really enjoy strength training. And I do that two to three times a week, lift weights, squats, and I love just like body weight exercises. In my best of times, I also have a cardio routine that I work on simultaneously with lifting weights. But the absolute best thing I can possibly do to have energy to perform on stage is to perform on stage because the muscles and the breath control and the way that I use my diaphragm to sing, no matter what I do in a gym, it's not going to emulate that specific combination of cardio, muscle use, and endurance that I do when I'm on stage. So the more I can be on stage and when I'm on tour, the first couple weeks, I feel like I'm just kind of warming up. And by the middle of like the second week, you start to feel like you've got this extra power and energy because you've been practicing and doing it every day. The way that my body has to kind of react to be able to move and sing and jump into the crowd and whatnot is completely unique to performing, I feel. So I tried to prepare, but the best way I can prepare is just practicing performing. This really makes sense. You know, the best way to really get good at something is to actually practice doing that exact thing, like push-ups or pull-ups. Yes, there are exercises that can help you eventually build up to that, but I can guarantee you that actually practicing a push-up or a pull-up, even if you can just go a quarter of the way, is the best way to actually get to performing a full one. Great advice. <laughs> last couple tours we had, we upgraded our vehicle. We were traveling from a small converted kind of bus that was like a short school bus kind of size that we had retrofit with like a mini fridge and TV and stuff. And we upgraded to a motorhome. And what is so amazing about the motorhome is it has a full kitchen. So we have a stove, we have an oven, we have a full fridge, we can have a freezer, we can put stuff in the freezer. So we can cook meals as if we are 
at home, we can meal prep. And my bass player, Oscar, makes like a huge batch of rice and then just like cooks different veggies and meat throughout the tour and pretty much survives like that. So that has been one really, really cool aspect of touring that's improved health. And also trying to make time to just do a little workout whenever you have like a spare moment or you're kind of just sitting around at a, a rest stop somewhere, you know, I'll get out the yoga mat and do some yoga. But I actually feel like I'm way more fit on the road than I am when I'm home because on the road, we're also every day performing, being physical. I'm usually taking long walks in the morning around to get coffee through a new town and then working out. So I actually feel like I'm busier and I'm in better shape when I'm on the road than when I'm home, to be honest. Do I have a pre-show routine? In my best days, I'm doing a full vocal warm up for 20 to 30 minutes and also doing a really great stretch. And also I've been integrating breathing exercises into my pre-show routine. So many people will know that breathing can be a really great way to calm yourself, to do something they call box breathing, different breathing techniques where you exhale longer than you inhale, which helps slow your heart rate and calms you down if you're having like stress or anxiety, which is great to do if you're trying to calm down after a show. But when I'm trying to rev up to play a show, I actually do what's called energy breathing. It's almost like you're trying to emulate breathing as if you're running a marathon and you kind of speed up your breathing and it actually gets your heart going faster and kind of sends, you know, your whole body like this tingling of energy. And that kind of helps me kind of hit the stage as if I've already played like three or four songs because usually some performers will tell you you know you kind of need to warm up a little bit and you kind of get into your stride usually after you've kind of done the first couple songs so for me it's kind of like let's get to that warmed up state before i step foot on stage <laughs> I completely do feel sluggish on days I'm not eating properly. And if I'm not working out, I can tell my body just like does not like me as much. <laughs> For me, the hardest performances are usually performances that are what we call one-offs, where you're just kind of, you're off for like a month and then you play one show and then you're off for a bunch of times. So you don't really have the same flow and energy you do when you're on tour and you kind of almost get into that routine where you can perform without thinking too much. Whereas when you do these one-offs, you're kind of out of, out of step, a little out of practice. So it doesn't kind of roll off the tongue, so to speak, as easy easily as if you're kind of in the groove of touring. A, my favorite ever physical activity is performing, rocking out in a crowd. But I also just love a great walk. Like one of my favorite things to do whenever we're touring is to just walk around the city. It just feels really good, you know, to go on a little hike, find some place that's kind of interesting, whether it's a downtown area or some kind of nature. That is always amazing. And I also really enjoy yoga and a strength training as well. My best self is working out every day when I'm on tour. My kind of mid-level self when I'm at home is like three times a week. And then sometimes a week goes by where I just kind of am busy with other stuff or just needed a week off. And I try not to put too much pressure on myself, but I will say the days that I can get out for a walk at least or go to the gym at least once a week or even just do some gentle yoga, it always makes me feel better. So I would, in my best life, I'm definitely working out like three to five times a week. Not too many restrictions. Dairy is known to be an inflammatory that is not so great for vocals. It's recommended in every vocal teacher's teachings I've ever done is to not have dairy before a show. Dairy to me is not the greatest for how I feel in general. And also I feel it makes my skin not so great. So it's something I avoid, but I definitely don't completely cut it out. In fact, I had ice cream yesterday, so it's not like I'm perfect, but I try to cut that out 
and carbs try to keep low. So I will often skip pasta and like bread heavy meals in favor of doing like a wrap or a rice based meal. So I prefer to do that than something that's really heavy and sits in your stomach where it makes you actually feel like you don't want to do anything the rest of the night. My guilty pleasures, well, I love chocolate and I, oof, I do love good French fries. Poutine is like the Canadian gravy, cheese curds, French fries. That is like a treat to have that. So sometimes near my house, there's this drive-in movie theater and I'll go and have a poutine if I'm going to the drive-in. If there is bread on a table, like warm, fresh bread at a nice restaurant, like not a crappy dinner roll, like a nice, fresh, delicious, warm. Did I say warm already? Yeah, that's really important when the butter melts. Oof. That is really hard for me to resist, especially when they bring it out and everyone's helping themselves. So I actually try not to buy too much bread in the house. Just keep a bakery far away from me because if it's close to me, oh my God, the smell of fresh baked bread is so good. Oh my God. <laughs> I see a lot of these musicians avoid pasta and bread. None of those two things are bad, but I see with carbs, it really comes down to personal preference. Like pasta and bread might feel very heavy to some people, but for some others, it gives them energy. So it really comes down to what makes you feel good. I would say sometimes I feel like I'm not that great at dealing with pressure and stress, but my techniques are definitely to get physical. If you feel stressed, I think the best thing to do is to go for a walk or a bike ride or to go to the gym. It really does help kind of regulate the body and also breathing. As I kind of alluded to before, I've been really interested in different types of breathing techniques. I find that's one thing that is sure far away to calm down is just deep breaths, exhale longer than you inhale and uh, try to do that for like at least 10 times. Just really feel like you're in your physical body for a bit because we do so much up here and our world is focused on what's going on in our brains and not so much what's going on in our bodies. And so if you can just like feel what's around you, like the softness of this blanket and the feeling of, you know, ground under your feet, going outside, spending time, like putting your feet in the grass, that can be completely distressing to me. And I love doing things like gardening. It's kind of like a new hobby that has really been able to de-stress me. I like doing um, needlework or anything that's a repetitive task that you slowly see the progress of that's like a physical task. I find that that's very relaxing. I love how she talks about being present, paying attention to your body and your surroundings to de-stress. I'm actually reading a book right now called Becoming Supernatural and the author talks about how just being caught up in stressful thoughts all the time can literally cause physical symptoms to your body. Stress literally causes disease. So all of these tips are really great. Thank you, Sky. First of all, hate is gonna hate, so you just have to really take it with a grain of salt and realize that as soon as you start getting negativity coming from the crazy place of the interwebs, it's usually a sign that you've reached a certain new audience because you've gone past your friends, you've gone past all your supporters, and you've reached like this, you know, new frontier where people are getting introduced to you that don't necessarily want what you're dishing out, right? And it's so easy, and I've done this, I've been so guilty of fixating on like the couple negative comments instead of the plethora of amazing supportive people that are also commenting encouraging words and it's just the human brain we just are you know seeking out the one thing we need to improve upon instead of all the things we're doing perfectly well first of all is to not read it and make sure you're in a good headspace do not go into like reading YouTube comments when you're in a negative headspace that is just not the place to be but it is hard it's hard to let these things things not affect us. We're all human and we all have insecurities. And especially if a comment like hits the nail on the head of your insecurity, it can be so hard to just let it go. But I think it, it does bring me peace to look at those situations with empathy and to think that the person who's writing that negative comment is not having the best day or is not having the best week or month or longer because people that are healthy people, happy people do not go online and troll people. So I try to think of that like it's a reflection on them and not on myself. Let's go back and listen to that. People that are healthy people, happy people do not go online and troll people. It's the people at the bottom who are trolling other people. The people at the top are busy collaborating and working on themselves. Such a bell, 
Well, I kind of look at a setback as you need setbacks so that you can get closer to the win. And so when you look at the setback as like a lesson learned or as one no closer to a yes, it kind of reframes it. Every time you have a setback as well, it makes you kind of like reassess what's important and what you really want. There is always more going on underneath the surface with every single person you meet. Everyone has their own story. Everyone's going through their own ups and downs. They're having their own trajectory of life. And we kind of have all these crossroads where we meet each other, whether that's in a comment online or whether that's on the street somewhere or at different parts in our life. And we just have to really embrace that nothing's gonna be perfect. Nothing's going to be fair all the time, but we're all should be just trying to do our best. And if you can do your best and you can be a force for good in the world even in the face of some of the negativity that's out there I think that that's kind of like where I find meaning is just being like a little bit of a light in the darkness and sometimes you're the only light walking through the darkness and sometimes you're in a stadium full of bright you know lights ie amazing people it's my hope that when uh, I play music one of the things that brings me so much joy is getting in these rooms with all these people People that are, are vibrating in the same wave wavelength and it kind of makes all the trudging through all this swamp <laughs> with all the crazy ups and downs of life worth it when you find those moments of connection and truth try to be the positivity in the world that you want to see with other people be kind one another she's not just preaching sky actually exudes this kind of positive energy her music is aggressive but her lyrics are always hopeful and inspiring it would make me so happy if you go check out her band and her music all her links are in the description and then check out my fitness interview with this other awesome Canadian metal vocalist Molly Rennick of Living Dead Girl right here. Sky you're awesome thank you so so much. And that's all. It was so great to be included Ramona thank you so much. Bye!